Hello, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Alina, for the welcome introduction. Excellent presentation uh, for all going over all the rules, all the dates, everything related to the hackathon. So now let's take a look at actually building an application using Metis or on the Metis network. So I'll share my screen. Uh, okay, hopefully, you can see the screen right now. Can you see the screen? Yes. Excellent, excellent. No, no fuzzy lines, no, uh, no anything related to that? Excellent. Excellent, okay. Uh, got some pictures of cats. Those will be relevant in a bit. So today, this is going to be just a walkthrough tutorial on an app that I've published. You can go over it. There's some, I guess, ideas, conceptions on how you will be able to build on Meetis. So as with all live demos, things may work, things may not. So if they don't work, we'll just move along. But the core idea is there and you can follow along in the future with this recording. So with this, I have the uh, Meetis demo application. I will come in here and clone it. So we have our Metis demo. Right in here, we have a bunch of files. Now, let me just open it up in here. All right, so here is our demo application. It needs to refresh. Okay, there we go. So in this case, we have a bunch of fi folders, files, and this is what a, I guess, fully fledged application looks like. You're probably all familiar with this. Uh, inside, we have the contracts folder. So this is where the contracts, where they're going to be deployed. They're going to be deployed on the Mutis network. So I've, uh, I've included some uh, parameter in here, such as the, the URL, which we're going to be deploying at, as well as the uh, chain ID. So you have to specify those details. So before we actually go in and dive into code and, and everyone just falls asleep, let's actually see how this looks like. So in this case, I'm going to actually install since any NPM application, oh, let me just reset that to the Metis demo because I, I created it, but then I deleted it. So I, I guess it's uh, not smart enough to detect that I'm already in it. So we're going to yarn install. This is going to install the packages. If you've ever developed any um, node applications, you're already familiar with this process. Again, we're not limiting the projects to just node or or any like react applications you can build on on any language any front end that you wish we do have tooling specific to node we do have tooling specific to um to javascript but again you can use any form of tooling while it's loading in linking linking dependencies and uh and, and doing everything uh essentially let, let's i guess investigate some of the uh things in here. So uh, initially, we have two environment files. So we have the uh, example.env, and then we have the uh, example.env.local. So these two files are very important. They're there to essentially tell the application where and in, in like uh, what, what your private key is in order to deploy the contract in, in, in the example.env. And then there's also the example.env.local, which talks about how you can use Polis and integrate Polis into your application. So hopefully, oh, sorry, my computer... sorry, Pavel. Uh, I don't know if everybody's been able to see what's going on on their screen. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I... Yes. Okay. Perfect. No, okay. no, 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 no. You will not. Oh, so because no. Okay. Yeah, this went black. So can you please share again? So it went black. Okay. <laughs> not a problem. See technical difficulties already, but that's not a problem over here. So can you see the screen now? Uh, yes. yes. Can, can you start, like, as, as you start showing the screen, can you start explaining from all over again? Yes. So so essentially, there's two two environment files. But again, we'll, we'll go into that while we're deploying the application. But let's just see how the application looks like just off the, off the get-go. So we're going to type in yarn dev. This is going to create uh one of the i guess just just the main application that that you can view so i'm going to change my screen over here again and so we're going to do localhost 
And again, if you've developed any type of node application, you're very familiar with this process already. And um, so right now it's just building and uh, everything is, is essentially launching as a, as a web server. So uh, we'll, we'll, wait a, we'll wait a few moments. This computer tends to be slow when it's running Zoom and, and, and <laughs> screen sharing and, and uh, all, all of the rest, but it should be uh, loaded pretty, pretty shortly in this case. Uh, but again, all the code is available on the GitHub. So you're able to come in, take a look for yourself, start the dev server, and uh, play around with it. And um, all right, there it is. Oh. All right, so we have the main screen over here. We have three projects. So we have the ERC721, the Polis ERC721, as well as the faucet. So right now, this application will load. I've already deployed um, or provided the contract info over here. And it will load an application that is on the METIS network. So it'll load in METIS, MET, and then we have two of our NFTs. So these are legitimate NFTs. They're uh, on their from the contract and, and essentially they, they come from the METIS network. Now, in this case, we have uh, two, two NFTs here. We have uh, the universe, which if we view, and you know, it'll take some time to load, but if we view, we see that we have name, description, owner, and image. And then if we have, if we hover over the cat, you know, we have a cat over here. So this is essentially the the base of the project. So you're able to essentially create NFTs and uh, create NFTs, view NFTs, and send NFTs to other users. So how, I guess, not all uh, applications will look like on Metis, but essentially gives you a, a little bit of the, uh, a taste to what, to what uh, you can build on. So in this case, we are on the Metis network. Uh, just as a brief mention that remember to click activate MetaMask. This will switch your network from whatever network that you're currently on to the Metis testnet. So over here, we have the Metis testnet. We're already on it, so therefore we see it. If you're not on the Metis testnet, you won't be able to see contracts that are here. All right, so this is, this is just the, the base of it. Now, we want to deploy our own contract. We want to compile. We want to deploy our own contract. And with that, we need to go back to our uh, go back to our great application that we just downloaded. So the first thing that you need is the private key. Now, I have already gone and, and created a private key and I've funded it as well, but you need funding, you need an account in order to, to deploy a smart contract. I'll, uh, I'll be deleting this, this, this account. So if, if anyone wants the, the rest of the METIS tokens, they can, they can get it. But uh, essentially I'll post my private key here. Remember, do not share your private key. This is very, very important. Um, but in this case, uh, we are doing a test demo. So in this case, this is okay. Once you've imported your private key, you just set this to .env so that it loads in as an environment variable. Don't worry about the inferior key. So in this case, we want to deploy on the METIS network. So currently, how the application works and how the application functions is that it'll go in and it'll compile the smart contract, which is located here. It'll compile this smart contract. And this is, again, very basic ERC721, basic NFT creation uh, contract. This will compile it so that it is uh, MVM compatible. So what this means is that it'll use the compiler specified in the hard hat config right here, which is right here, the metis.io uh, forward slash hard hat MVM. And so this basically compiles it down into the application that you can use on metis. So in this case, let's, let's go ahead and compile it. We'll, we will run into an error and I'll show you how to debug it very shortly, but I'll, uh, I'll just, uh, just, the commands, the script is specified here. So we want to deploy ETs. So what this does is that it basically just deploys it using hard hat, which is a dev tooling. We'll just do yarn deploy ETs, and this will take a little bit. 
So again, it's taking our, our account information. It's, oh, I'll probably slow down a bit here since it's, it's uh, processing. And uh, again, screen sharing, Zoom. So all of this is running a lot of resources. So if you do hear me like lag out a bit, so that's, that's one of the reasons. Um, let me know if I'm if I am lagging out, and and um, so that I can I guess just stop and and and. Uh, <laughs> uh, we hear so, you well. Excellent. Okay, so right now it's just compiling it with the OVM, and right here we we've found out oh an error. So one of the errors that we are currently uh, implementing is is an additional opcode which is the self-balance opcode. So it will be in a, in a future version, hopefully very, very, very soon. Uh, you know, maybe like a couple uh, week after the hackathon starts. So we want to, we want to make sure that, that no one runs into this error. But in, the, in case that you do run into this error and uh, you know, you're watching this uh, ahead of time, uh, see if the see if the compiler version has been updated because then you, you won't run into this error. But if you do, then there is a simple fix and it is actually documented in the documentation. So right here, if you follow this guide, managing deploy, uh, deployments with METIs. Oh, let me just stop my sharing for that and start sharing the Chrome. So we go here, we see that there's a guide and in here we have a temporary fix for the self-balance opcode. So it is documented, it is, it is put in there. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is that this is due to uh, one of the uh, smart contracts provided by Open Zeppelin. So Open Zeppelin I, uh, provides that that contract, and it's um, I guess it has a self balance. It has a you know checking uh, for the I guess address this dot balance. So currently, um, Metis is an ERC twenty token, and so it needs to be. I guess it needs to be specified that you're checking the balance of the ERC20 token right here. So in this case, let's, I guess, uh, run through it very quickly with, with this, do, do, the, uh, do the fix right here, back into the application. And so we're just going to, I'm going to come over and copy different lines, but they're all present in that, documentation. And so we're going to go over here. We're going to go into node modules and then we're going to scroll ah, and all the way up to uh, let's see it's it's a bit up. Oh open Zeppelin 3 utils and then uh, address dot soul. So over here first thing that we want to do is we want to import the IERC20 token also provided by the Open Zeppelin uh, team. And then next is that we want to make sure that we change this line. I know, let's copy this real quick. We make sure we, we go all the way down to around line 55 and we change this line to be this. So again, we're, we're setting it to the, to the actual METIS token. So this is the, the ERC20 token. And we're essentially checking the balance of the ERC20 token, which is like a self-balance, except we, we do it directly from the ERC20 token. Next is that we'll scroll down all the way down to right here, another self-balance opcode. And we just do a little bit of a, a little bit of a replace. Oh, I can I copied a bit too much. Let's do this here, copy, and I think this one's it, yep. And then we'll save it. So we've replaced it, we've added in the IERC20 token. We've uh, essentially said that it's located here. Let's check the balance of this. Everything's great. All right, so we're going to go back into our terminal. We've already fixed the error and we're going to, again, deploy METIs. This is going to recompile. It's going to see, yes, we did the changes, everything's correct. And then it's going to recompile. And then once it recompiles, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so it'll it'll uh, it'll deploy it. That's that's you know the whole you know, crossing fingers and you know knocking on wood. <laughs>
So we're compiling the files and then eventually we'll get the contract ID. It finished successfully and we're reusing, uh, I guess, a previous deployment. Actually, we do not want to reuse. Let's do like just a fresh deployment. So in this case, we're going to go from our deployments here. We're just going to delete the METIS folder. Say, ah, don't, you know, we're going to delete it. We don't need it. So we're going to redeploy. This is going to essentially generate a new contract address. This is going to generate a new ABI. This is going to generate all of the, all of the different things and uh, essentially just deploy it onto the METIS network. So we've already compiled it and now we're just deploying it. We have our transaction and boom, instantane almost instantaneous in terms of that. So it's it's a, essentially deployments are really fast. So if you're ever if you ever deployed smart contracts on Ethereum directly, you're gonna have to be waiting for a couple minutes. In this case, a second. So right here, we we just deployed it at this at this address. Now everything is already provided in here, so everything is already auto completes in terms of the address. So let me just close the. The terminal here so we already have the address the abi so everything is already put it very nicely very efficiently and uh this is entirely new in terms of this this deployment so we need to now after we've uh we've deployed it we need to refresh our application so right now it, it doesn't detect that we we uh actually changed the metis erc 721 so it's using like the previous contract that we already had. And so we go back to our application and we refresh it. So it's already refreshing. Let's close that. Right click, open link in new tab. And hopefully we'll be able to see that our meets at Meetis NFT collection. Yes, it's brand new. As you can see, there's no, there's no uh, NFTs currently present here. Let's create an NFT real quick. Uh, so I don't know, I don't know what's, what, what's, I have some cats here. So I don't know, let's pick this one. Doesn't really matter. We're going to copy the image address. We're gonna come here, we're gonna do cat. And- uh, We're not this. seeing the cats. I'm, I'm oh, just... okay, okay, yeah. I, I forgot to, I forgot to change the, uh, this over here. So in this case, okay. So right here, we've, let me just re-demonstrate this. So the application reloaded, we're going to right click and we see that there's no NFTs present in here. So there's no NFTs here. This is an entirely Perfect. new contract that's been deployed. So this is entirely brand new because we've just deployed it. So I come over here, I'm looking for cats. This is a cool cat. Let's copy the image address. We're going to actually create an NFT. So in here we say cat. This is a cat. Very, very thorough description. And we post the image URL and we click create NFT. This is going to pop up a dialog. I'm not sure if you're going to, if you see the dialog. Uh, let me just reshare if in that case. So we we have this dialog. It says, yes, here it is. We're going to confirm it. And actually, let me just go back to the desktop and see how long it takes. So I'm going to confirm it now. So there should be a notification. Boom, it's already confirmed, like less than a second. Already confirmed, this is, an, this is a new uh, NFT directly on the METIS network. And so we can view it, we can essentially go in and we see that we do have our cat and this is in fact a cat. I can also send the NFT, but you know, that's going to the lucky winner who <laughs> I guess develops the best application. Uh, all right, so this is a demonstration of just, of just using MetaMask, but we want to do a little bit more. We wanna use Polis. We wanna actually demonstrate it using Polis. So in this case, I have my Polis account right here. This is an entirely new account. I am a developer. And so in this case, you might, if you're not a developer, so you have to go into profile settings 
And then, uh, oh, I have to sign in again. You have to go into profile settings and essentially come in and, um, and make sure to request developer status right here. So the first thing that we want to do in this case is we want to create a domain. And a domain is essentially a way for Meetis to interact with your application. It's a way that you can essentially register your application with Meetis. So a domain name will just do the polis uh, test. So that's this is essentially our, our domain name, and we and we provide an ABI. Now previously, I've I've already uh, shown you where the where the ABI is in terms of this. Let me just go over here. So we've already have our Meetis ERC seven twenty one. Let me just close this. So we have our ABI here. We want to copy this whole chunk. If anyone knows any like keyboard shortcuts that, that can save this process, then I'd be greatly appreciated because I think I can save years of my life. <laughs> and then we also have to provide the chain ID. And in this case, it's uh, 435. So, so um, oh, you, you didn't actually see that, but over here, we deployed it on chain 435. So you have to specify that, oh, sorry, over here, on chain 435. So you have to specify the actual ID of it. And so that, that's basically the, um, the, the, the key point in terms of that. So we've, we've uh, specified chain 435 and now we want the address. So this is where the actual NFT is located or the NFT contract. So we copy this address and then let's go back to our Polis application. And as you can see, I've already filled in 435 and we paste in our contract address and we click create domain. So you've created the domain, note the name Polis test. So this registers our application and allows us to essentially, allows Polis to see, hey, you're using this application. We can internally uh, set it so that you, uh, users can approve or decline transactions directly on your page without using any third-party tools like MetaMask, for example. So we want to register our application. This is again built in so, so that users can come in, sign up to Polis and essentially use applications directly within it. So the app name is, um, I don't know, test app. And I guess I'll put in my email. And we're going to copy this, paste this, paste this. Authorized domains, very interesting concept, but you have to essentially specify the actual domain. This is what maintains the security of the system and prevents, uh, for example, URL manipulation type of um, attacks so that user funds are safe. So you have to specify each domain that you provide to the users so to maintain that security. So in this in this case, I have localhost local domain. I specify the port. Typically you don't, but in development applications you, you it's typically port 3000. We save this, we have our information here. We have our ID as well as the private key, keep it secret. Uh, don't, don't do what I'm doing and show it to you, but in this case, this is okay. Uh, you can easily just delete it if, if any of this application, if any of this information is compromised. In this case, we have all of the information right here. I'm just going to go back to our, um, ERC, I, I guess our, our application, our demo. And so we go, uh, remember I mentioned how we have the, the .env uh, .local file. We wanna rename that so that it's just .env. And so we have app ID and uh, you know two cases for app ID. This is uh, necessary for, um, for essentially Next.js to register that app, but I'm gonna copy all of that information real quick. So. Here is the app ID for this. And then we paste it here as well. There's also an app secret. And we saw that before where uh, it was right here. So let me just paste it. Uh, there's also the contract name. So what was the contract name? It was uh, Polis Test. All right, perfect. So now we have all the information that we need in order to uh, actually use Polis in order to uh, integrate Polis into our application. So what does that even mean? How do I know that Polis is even integrated? Well, 
let's just demonstrate it right here. Remember when you're changing any sort of configuration files or .n files, you have to restart the, the development server. So we've restarted it. We're going back over to here. And so we're refreshing, it's rebuilding, and Polis is now integrated. So as soon as uh, you know, it stops loading right here, we can see that Polis would now be integrated. It's taken a little bit to, to rebuild and everything, but uh, in, in terms of, so this is a de development application and again, a slow computer and, and, and whatnot. Um, but typically if you run this in production, you would build it, it would be just, you know, instantaneous. Uh, what screen are you sharing right now with the code? Ah, that's a good point. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. We were just, we were just nothing important happening. We we're just waiting for the screen to load. So in this case, this is where we are. We can click on Meetis login. So in this case, we're logging in to Meetis. We're logging into Polis. So I provide my account details. I sign in. And then I confirm that I'm allowing the application to essentially uh, view my address. Now we're logged in. It says, hey, that's my name. Yeah. And then uh, we can go into Polis ERC721. And now this application is not using MetaMask. It's, it's not, it's completely like integrated in, inside of, of the, inside of the, uh, oh, I, my apologies. Every time, so I need to implement this in this application, but uh, typically you would store the authentication token that you receive from Meetsies in some sort of cookie storage. Now, the way that this worked is that it just reloaded the page, which means that it cleared all the data, but, in your application, if you're using Polis, you have to store it in some type of cookie storage so that users don't have to log in constantly in order to uh, use the application. And so we're going to log in again, and we see that we registered the same exact application. So now again, this is not using MetaMask, this is just using Polis, and boom, we see that we have our cat NFT right here, and we're able to view it, and we're able to essentially um, you know, do, do uh, everything that would be able to do, but using Polis. Um, now again, for development applications, it does refresh. So um, typically, when you're when you're working with um, <laughs> when you're working with something here, ah, ah, as as you can see, the the devil already broke. But in this case, in this case, when you when you already have it live running, it's um, it's fully integrated. You would have to store it again in that cookie storage, but you would be able to essentially log in, accept, and then everything runs in the browser. You're able to see it. You're able to see all the data. You're able to interact with it. Let's just create an NFT for, for just demo purposes. And we're going to, I don't know, another cat. Another cat. And then there, this is another cat. And we're going to go back to our cats. And sure, why not? here copy and we're going to paste that in create it this allows us to confirm the submission uh, yeah yeah and 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 essentially in 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 this case is yes there we go <laughs> and we can confirm our submission and it processed almost instantaneously and we see that we have another cat in in this ah and yeah now we can view it <laughs> <laughs> again, the, the the way that it reloads and 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 I guess um, so. Again, you need to start in cookies, but I think that since it it doesn't need to reload since it it's like lazy loaded. So I guess we can we can go back here, go back to Polis. We see how this application works when it's already you know integrated, so we're able to see all of the data that's being present. We're able to go back and forward, create NFTs, view NFTs, send NFTs. I don't know. We, we, we can we can just one last thing. We just send it over to um, to zero x seven d a six. So I'm going to send it over. Just going to confirm it again. Ugh. So again, this is this takes a couple tries. There we go. Uh, and then boom, everything went through. Everything processed, and now it belongs to a different address. So uh, this.